Treasury departments have been expanding their roles in recent years beyond operational functions to adopt a more strategic role within their organizations. To gain a better understanding of this shift, EY undertook an extensive research program with treasurers and chief financial officers. Yeah, that's right. And to explore EY's findings and what the future holds for treasury functions, we're joined right now by Matt Cox, Global Corporate Commercial and SME Banking Consulting Leader at EY. Hi, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. A pleasure, as always. Welcome to Cyboss TV. Let's let's get into this research that's been conducted. Then, uh, what can what light can you shed on it for us? Yeah, sure. I mean, we did an extensive amount of research, as you mentioned. We looked at over eighteen hundred CFOs and treasurers across the globe. We looked at seven different markets, uh, fourteen different industries over $10 trillion of annual turnover for these clients. That's a pretty substantial amount of, uh, of coverage in terms of the clients we were actually looking at. And there was a lot of interesting findings we'll talk about, but it was really to understand kind of what are the key challenges they're facing, where are opportunities for banks and financial institutions, and what were their expectations of financial institutions as we went through it. Yeah, but why specifically focus research on the CFOs and the treasurers? Curious there. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, look, at the end of the day, CFOs and treasurers are one of the primary clients that the banks actually deal with. And historically, if you think around that role and that function, it's been more around kind of operational efficiency, cost, and, and how they focus on that. But that role is actually changing, and they're becoming more strategic advisors to the rest of the C-suite, focused on actually business growth and opportunity. And so given that that's the primary reaction point for a lot of the banks and financial institutions, we thought best to hear it in their voice from them and how they're thinking about it um, to really drive insights and in where we think banks can provide more opportunity. So what did the, uh, the, the research uncover as the biggest challenges ahead? Yeah. So look, I think there were, in my mind, two big categories of challenges. So the first thing is around how do they get diverse and sustainable funding? Um, and then the second category was really around treasury operational efficiency and how they get better from that. Two really interesting data points in my mind that I thought were, were quite surprising. So 74% of CFOs and challenge, uh, treasurers found a challenge in actually getting ESG-focused funding. And if you look at the news, which you guys do every day, um, ultimately, that's something that was a little surprising. You would have imagined Imagine, given what's going on in the market dynamics, that wouldn't have been such a large challenge and a priority for them. Right? That, that is curious. Why is that so important to banks? Well, I think from a bank perspective, part of the feedback we heard was how do they actually focus on um, getting the right products and services that they understand, right? And so, you know, there, some of those clients are going to specialized companies. And I think the bank's opportunity there is really how do they tell their value proposition around DSG? How do they tell their value proposition around sustainability? And how do they enable those clients that, that really have a need and a desire for that in a more meaningful way? What would you say is the uh, top three to five opportunities there for banks then? Yeah. So, so look, there were a lot of opportunities that came out of this and we, we probably don't have enough time, but I'd say three really important things that, again, from, from those CFOs and treasurers, one was around treasury managed services. So, mm -hmm. you know, what are the right things around treasury risk management? What are the right things if you think around from a treasury operation and digitization perspective? Uh, what about a cash management and liquidity function from, from that section? So that, that was really the first point. The second point, um, more broadly from a treasury perspective and, and a managed service perspective was the digitization of that treasury function. And that's really where AI actually plays into the space, which you hear a lot around. Um, so there were two things that came out. 90 plus percent of CFOs and treasurers said, I would love a treasury financial advisor to identify and help me solve the biggest issues I'm facing. Similarly, 86% said, I would love to have a treasury advisor that actually helped me focus on insights in running my business better and more effectively. And so I think, you know, as you start to see the convergence of technology in this space, you're going to see much more willingness from those organizations to do that. Crystal ball time for you. Okay, <laughs> Matt. If you were to predict the future, how do you envision banks really kind of using these technologies and serving their clients in the next three to five years? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So we're actually undergoing a writing a paper around the future of cash management right now. But I, I think even before we get there, it's, it's really starting with the fundamentals. So how do they streamline onboarding, right? How do they get their data right? Uh, and how do they focus on integrating the technology between those? Now, 
if you look further out in the future on what that will allow them to do, in my mind, really, if you think around robo treasury I, and the ability for them to actually, um, you know, a corporate treasurer or CFO to provide parameters around how they want to manage their business, how they want to manage their investments and really focus on that and to allow them to focus more on the business strategy and execution. So I think, you know, robo treasury and, and those capabilities are going to become a lot more talked about over the next two years. What role would you say that uh, technology, data, AI has to play in the, in the products and services that banks are going to have to offer? I, I think it's fundamental. Every opportunity we saw was really focused on how do we embed technology to enable our team. So it's not about replacing teams, but it's about enabling those teams. Mm-hmm. And so I think the focus really is on, you know, how do you make it business-led, technology-enabled? How do you still keep a human in the loop as you're focused on technology so that, you know, it will provide recommendations, but you're still all ultimately accountable for the decisions relative to this. And I think technology is going to significantly accelerate and streamline functions, um, but also change the roles and functions that people play. So as banks then really take a look at this market, where should they start in this journey if they're going to incorporate a lot of this to reimagine, if you will, um, what they offer today versus what they offer tomorrow? It's a great question. Look, banks do a lot of this themselves today. So I think a little bit is how do they take what they do today and focus it outwards towards their clients? How do they actually scale that functionality? And how do they monetize that, right? I, I think the second point is back to your point around technology, right? So how do they actually assetize the the technology that they have to do as a managed service? Think treasury management as a service. Can they assetize that and provide that out to their clients in a more integrated and seamless way. And so, look, there's a lot of things banks, I think, can do. And that it was very clear, the hypothesis and, and ultimately the outcome of the study was banks can add a tremendous amount of value to corporate treasurers and CFOs, and they are willing to get that from banks and financial institutions. Well, it's a great chat to get us underway here on day three on Cybus TV. Matt, thank you so much. After and all that energy, after how much, 20, 26, 27 hours uh, flight? It's a bit there. of a flight, but I'm, I'm glad, glad to be here. It's a great, great location, and Cybus is always an energizing event. So fantastic. thanks so much for having us. Great to have you, sir. Uh, Matt Cox, Global Corp. Corporate, commercial and SME banking consultant leader at EY. Thank you again for joining us on Cybos TV. No, thanks. You as well.